Uh, don't worry, Connie. <laughs> good, good. She's into her pink at the moment. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, what I would like to do is welcome you to the um, online masterclass here. As I was just saying earlier, it's the first time I've run something like this and uh, quite impressed that I'm actually here <laughs> and it works. Um, we did a quick run through earlier and everything went fine technically, so that's good. But yeah, I wanted to welcome you um, who have done the Creativity Challenge. Um, possibly some of you didn't get around to doing it. Some of you registered but didn't get around to doing it. That's fine. Um, some of you have done it. Some of you have done bits of it. Um, and some of you have been taking part by email and not, not being involved in the Facebook group. Um, so welcome to you all. I wanted to put this slide up here. This is a slide that I show students all the time and a quote that I really like to use. Um, and it kind of encompasses and is a really good kind of um, representation of what we do on the creativity challenge. But the creation of something new is not accomplished by the internet, but by the play instinct arising from inner necessity. The creative mind plays with the object it loves. Um, Carl Jung. Uh, and I think that is a great way to start if we can think about what we did on the challenge, playing with materials, with ideas, with techniques, but generally kind of just not being too um, serious, tense, stressed about what it is we're doing. So let's let's move on from that. Um, and let's get cracking. Hopefully this is going to work on the key. Okay, so why did you join our creativity challenge? I'm guessing there's probably a number of reasons that you may have, but my thoughts are that um, you're possibly finding it difficult to find your own voice in your art, to do something that's a little bit um, more personal, something that's different to other people out there. Um, you may be finding difficulty in finding inspiration that's personal to you when you're used to teachers setting a project or a brief. I know students that I work with who are from schools are so used to being set something by a teacher um, and there's quite sort of um, common themes that run through these projects. But if you're not in school, if you're a mature student or if you're at further education, again, there's still sort of um, often very typical projects that you see out there or typical subject matter that you might find you're following because it's been done a lot before and it's a kind of comfort I suppose. You may be feeling lost with how to come up with original ideas and this is kind of normal and pretty common. Obviously nothing is completely original, we all kind of take influences from one place or another, there's nothing, we're not reinventing the wheel. But um, coming up with something original that's, um, you know, something a little bit more personal is a feeling that we all have. So the, do you then try and think of what you can be inspired by? You know, thinking about, you know, trying to wait for inspiration, thinking and thinking and trying to get inspired. And do you create ideas in your head? Maybe you, you kind of imagine these ideas and you create it in your head and you kind of draw and you make the ideas in your head um, and it's wonderful and great and then you actually dismiss them eventually because they're not very good or you don't feel that they're good enough ideas before you've even put pen to paper. I mean, I know I do that. You know, I, I can think and think and think and you think of these great ideas. Actually never get around to doing it because you kind of think, oh, well, it's not going to be any good or it's been done before. Um, so these are all common things. And do you also want to know what your final artwork is before you've even started? And this is a really common one that um, I think everybody deals with, but I think students, particularly pupils at school, um, the curriculum it often encourages you to decide and design what your final piece is gonna be before you start doing any research, before you've really so thoroughly um, engaged in your subject and there's various reasons for that we'll talk about that in a few minutes um, but if you do we forgive you because <laughs> we all do it to some extent but that's part of what the creativity challenge was hoping to try and um, kind of put a stop to or encourage you not to do is to try and just go with the flow a little bit more and not worry too much about what the final thing is going to be 
But all this kind of brain activity, the things that you're thinking about, the research that you do in your head, the artists that you maybe look at and you look at books, um, just looking at the bookshelf up there, you maybe go to exhibitions, um, you do all this thinking and you perhaps think about what the work is going to be and you, you imagine it. All of this thinking actually needs to be documented because this is part of the creative process. And that's what we were doing on days one, um, well, all of them, to be honest, but one, two and three, day three particularly, was all that kind of research, the brainstorming, the thinking of possibilities, the looking at artists, the going out there and exploring and photographing and really kind of um, delving deep into what the subject is. It all needs to be documented because if it's not documented, it hasn't taken place as far as the colleges are concerned. And all that stuff actually is half, at least half, or maybe even more than the create of the creative process. It's the research and the development. It's some of the critical reflection. It's um, context. You're looking at artists. You're taking in inspiration from other artists. So that's it's, that's a lot of the creative process that you're doing in your head, and it's not getting out there. And therefore, the colleges, when they look at your portfolio, will think hasn't happened. You don't want them to think that because that's part of what they're assessing you on. So you've probably visited open days and you've been to, and seen successful portfolios and you'll know that ideas are essential, as important if not more than technical drawing and painting ability. Um, I'm just going to nip back to that one. Drawing and painting and technical ability, we'll talk a bit more about later, are things that often the colleges say to you, but we can teach you that. We need to know that you've got potential with your ideas that you're thinking creatively we can teach you how to paint we can teach you how to animate we can teach you how to use desktop publishing packages but we can't necessarily teach you to be creative so they're interested in your ideas and this this can be quite daunting and frustrating if you don't know how to start exploring more personal ideas so the key to showing how unique your ideas are is in your sketchbook. And that's really what the creativity challenge was for. And, and sketchbooks all the time come up in conversation as being, I don't know what to do in them. I don't really know what I should be doing. What's the sketchbook for? How do you do it? They seem to be these kind of mysterious things um, that always cause a um, bit of a challenge to students. So I'm guessing that you wanted to boost your creativity for, for success at your dream art college. Or you wanted to learn to find out how to um, make an inspiration for a more personal individual portfolio. So if you did the creativity challenge, each step was vital to progress. And I mentioned that briefly here. Each step was really important. Um, sorry, Jeannie, this was for you. <laughs> Because you said to me, you didn't do day three, <laughs> or you struggled with day three. Do comment if, if, if I'm talking and you want to ask questions, give us a shout. It's fine. Let's have a quick look. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, day three, there was a lot of work actually in day three. I kind of look back on it. And actually, when I was preparing all the material for it, when I was doing it, I kind of did think, oh, this is quite a lot. And the video was about half an hour, which I didn't intend it to be. Um, <laughs> more comments oh done, done a bit since yeah great yeah it, it was quite a lot of work day three um but i think it lays a really good foundation for um really kind of ensuring that you um you know make the most of what the subject or the place or the you know whatever it is you're exploring the make that you make the most of it um okay so yeah that was the um the mind mapping, it was going out to the place that you like or the, the subject that you um, makes you happy, angry, etc. Because this informs what it is you're exploring within the subject or the object. Um, and, and the reason why we chose, I think I mentioned at the time, happy or angry, there's lots of other ways to kind of get this, these, you know, juices flowing, something that's personal to you, but happy and angry, angry, you know, it, it provokes a feeling, it provokes a response. 
going places that you really enjoy provokes feelings of happiness you know you, you kind of saw that yourself um, and to get in that kind of zone where it means something really personal to you is, is what they want to see they don't just want to see any old picture of you know somebody walking down the street or a landscape or a, just a portrait so without doing the mind map and research of your topic the scope is very narrow and over the years i've been teaching and i've been teaching now for um 1995 so 22 years I would say more often than not, if the final pieces are not particularly good, quite poor, and it usually boils down to the research not being strong and deep enough. If your ideas are weak and you're not happy and it doesn't fulfill the brief, if you're working in the design areas, it's usually because you've not really nailed your research. You've stopped before you've really got to the interesting stuff. So, and in that sense, it's just another tree, for example, or another person in the street, a portrait, I've just said that, and it doesn't have any of the connection that you have to it coming through. But this is the stuff that makes your work individual to you. Um, so did you miss day three research of what's already out there as well? Because that's really interesting, you don't need to answer. <laughs> but um, other artists in your research, looking at other artists, um, finding out who else has you know for me who else has looked at plastics who else has looked at recycling who else what are they doing what are they doing with it how are they doing it why are they doing it reading about it really thoroughly investigating this because this is the only way that you kind of come up with new good ideas yourself um, and it also fulfills that context part of what the colleges are assessing you against context you, you need to demonstrate that you are living and breathing in a contemporary art world. You're looking at your contemporaries, who's out there in the galleries, who's out there, you know, designing for certain, you know, catwalk shows, who are the new graduates, what are they doing? Um, and, and that's this research here that we did, um, looking at, you know, the research of the subject I was looking at, um, let me get my mouse subject of the plastics but we were also looking at artists who were exploring it and designers there's quite a few um, graphic design campaigns for plastics and, and you know marketing not marketing public relations so and if you miss that out then you also don't demonstrate a good interrogation of the potential of the subject or the idea and then you end up doing something pretty predictable that's been seen before and it's not very individual. Okay, most things have been seen before, but you need to bring your kind of slant to it. And, and to quote some of the colleges and what they're looking for, this is from the website, a strong portfolio submission will show evidence of independent work beyond school and college projects. Assessors are looking for work which shows original thinking as well as depth, personality and visual understanding. Okay. So your ability to have an idea, to research that idea, develop it and bring it to some sort of fruition. So that's University of the Arts of London. So that's Central St. Martins, um, oh, crikey, Camberwell, Wimbledon. Um, OK, just want a quick look at a comment from Jeannie there. Yes, but I often find it difficult not so much to choose the subject, but to stick with it. OK, we'll come to that in a wee while, actually, because we're talking about that a bit later sticking with things that are difficult sticking with difficulty yeah i'll come back to that Jeannie. yeah okay sorry my keyboard's not as sensitive as the mouse there we go okay so demonstration of original thought critical thinking and visual research skills so the original thought is the kind of looking at your research that you're doing around what's really you know your passion, angst, all these things. Your critical thinking is your annotations and how you're looking at the work and responding and making decisions. And then your research skills, visual research skills are, um, you know, it, it, it all encompassed, but you're drawing, you're experimenting with your materials and, you know, whatever it is you're doing um, in that early part of your creative process. So drawing from life within a variety of different media and techniques doesn't show development. Okay, I'll talk a bit about that in a minute with um, 
my own experience that's fun <laughs> so what's the idea interest behind the work and how has the work moved on from the initial drawing and exploration um, so that's what your development does it, it should take your work from the initial idea or interest which might be you know drawing the plastics um, you know it wasn't that I had an interest in those plastic shapes they weren't particularly exciting I didn't really like the textures or the shapes or but it was the idea behind it it was the interest in what they represented and and it was that that I was trying to um, communicate and and we just started I mean we only did five days we just started um, there's an awful lot further where where that can go and that's something I'll talk about towards the end of the presentation so yeah, that's what I just said. We took the first steps of the process on the creativity challenge. So drawing is, is the basis of any strong portfolio. It can develop into anything that you like, but drawing is an essential skill. But drawing doesn't have to mean pencil on paper. It doesn't have to mean any material on paper. You can draw with a sewing machine. You know, you can be sewing, you know, um, and moving the fabric around and drawing you can be drawing with tape on walls you can be drawing with tape in space you can be drawing with light um, you, there's all sorts of ways of drawing drawing these days is seen to be quite a, a wide reaching activity um, and we will talk more about that um, on the course that i'm talking about later so how do I know that this problem exists, this, this problem of finding original individual ideas? Yay, because I was there in 1990, that's how I know. <laughs> um, a quick bit of fun for you. This was me, it wasn't in 1990, but it, <laughs> it wasn't long after that when I was at art college. Um, that's me in the middle, Wonder Woman. Look at our creativity, wonderful stuff all homemade costumes i have to say nothing was bought <laughs> um but i was there in 1990 that's how i was on a foundation course down in england um i applied for the art colleges and at the time um it was when the applications went sequentially so you applied for the first choice you had to tell them which was your first choice college and if you didn't get into that then it would go on to your second choice and then it went on to your third choice um, whereas now you get five choices and they all go out at the same time and you can get five offers all at once if you want to. So I was there in 1990, you didn't have any offers. I applied to three places. I went through clearing as well and I didn't get any offers and I was absolutely gutted um, because I thought what I was doing was pretty good and I was really technically competent with painting and drawing. Um, but you know, I just had no idea what to do, what to draw. You know, I, I asked my mum what I should draw and you know, I drew some pop, dried poppy seed heads. I drew some shells that were sitting on the mantelpiece. I drew some freesias, I think they were. But, you know, nothing really floated my boat. It was just a demonstration of how I could draw, paint. Um, so that was, um, yeah, sorry, I'll finish that story <laughs> before I get distracted with the next image. That, that was the story then. I didn't get any, so I stayed on for another year on my foundation course. Um, my tutors kind of gave me some really specialist help. Um, I, you know, I think I just matured a bit as well. I, I was quite young in my year, and I think I just maybe needed another year. Um, but I began to look at um, some different artists, and I went down to London, and I concentrate focused on on the underground and did lots of photographs and drawings in the underground of the kind of tunnels and tubes and um escalators and i did some quite um I say so myself i thought they were quite good <laughs> and it got me a place at dundee duncan jordanston and another one at um manchester poly i think it was at the time um so i had two places that year and i think things just kind of slotted into place but I also spent nine years interviewing students and assessing entrance portfolios at Edinburgh College of Art. Um, and we would look at the portfolios. This was before digital portfolios. And the majority of portfolios, um, or a lot, not the majority, a lot of portfolios came in. And they really were demonstrations of just being able to draw and paint really well, really accurately, really proficiently. And they weren't of anything very exciting, quite kind of typical cliched 
school projects. Um, and that's kind of when I realised that, you know, really there was a need for something that bridged the gap between school and, and college because the colleges were expecting so much more but the schools weren't offering that or some were depending on very much which school you were at and which teachers you were working with um, so that's why I set up Portfolio Month and that's why I know that it is a challenge um, so why does the problem exist and well my, my thoughts initially are partly because of the school curriculum um, my this is my opinion I'm not saying this is this is it but the pressure on teachers is huge I think at schools these days uh, for standards and for league tables and to get students through um, their exams to get them past good grades and I think it allows very little scope for experimentation risk-taking doing something a bit different um, I also think that they're not necessarily being taught how to think, they're being taught very much technical stuff, but not being taught and the time spent with them to really go into their ideas and how things could be developed. Um, and an, yeah, a, a, an overemphasis on technical ability. But also I think the problem exists because it's very difficult to teach it other than one-to-one. -one. Imagine you've got a class of you know, 20, 25 students trying to get them all working on an individual idea that's all individual and unique to them and getting around the class in the time that you've got to try and get them through a th certain stages of the curriculum I think would be a nightmare so often you find that there's very sort of limited projects that go ahead it's all very safe um, and yeah I say that that's my opinion so you maybe maybe you're following a school curriculum you're maybe a mature student doing extra evening classes or you're, or you're at school doing evening classes as well um, or you may be doing some skills based short courses when you get a chance maybe you take time off work um, in the summer and go and do a week's class in pottery for example or printmaking um, but very few of these assist you to explore your ideas they're often very technical based you're exploring a process um, so really yeah what did we do on the creative challenge creativity challenge i just wanted to link this back to what the colleges are looking for so that you can get a sense of what it was we went through so on day one we identified things that we do places we go things that make us happy or angry and why did we do that well so that it's personal to us and no one else and that fits in with um original thinking as well as depth and personality which is what Edinburgh College of Art specify in their guidelines about a portfolio. In day two we experimented with mark making and why did we do that? Well it was it was so that it's personal to us and no one else risk taking and getting out of your comfort zone and doing something that you know has not been somebody's not shown you all right we're all going to do this da, 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 da. we're all going to do that you're kind of exploring and thinking of kind of maybe quite random things to do or um, it's your decisions and you're having fun with the materials. Day three, we were researching the subject and other artists. So to put your work into context and to give you ideas. So this is a demonstration of original thought and critical thinking and the visual research skills that Falmouth, for example, Falmouth University, um, look for in portfolios. So day four and day five, very similar um, experimental drawing. So we were visually exploring your subject to try and understand it through drawing. So we were looking at it at different angles. We were um, using different materials. We were working with different techniques, working fast, working slow. Trying to build our kind of understanding of what the object is, or the place, or the um, you know the subject. And, and this demonstrates a of the demonstration of visual research skills. So that's the same for day five. And then we went on to the bonus. I hope some of you looked at the bonus because um, that was a, in my thoughts, a bit of a last minute, not last minute, but something that I thought would be useful to have um, because we've done so much in that research day on the Wednesday. I just thought I can't be going through loads more stuff today because people are gonna just 
find it too much. So the bonus date, the annotation reflection, if you didn't look at that, go back and take a look at that because um, there was lots of ideas of how you can start questioning what it is about what you're doing um, to make decisions about how to move on, things you want to dismiss, um, things you enjoy doing, um, and, it, and that helps with the critical thinking. But this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of the process. Um, it takes a long time. Building work, making work, building portfolios, it takes a long time. And I think people think that they can do it in, you know, a couple of weeks. <laughs> Hopefully not. But um, to create a really good portfolio does take time. Um, so what I wanted to do was to talk about five super common, super costly mistakes that keep students like you stuck. And we see these all the time. I've talked, touched a bit upon this one, but you focus too much on the final piece. Therefore, you miss out great swathes of research and or development. You try to show too many different ideas and techniques, therefore not really exploring any in depth that's required. Now, I'll tell you about a student that we had last year actually here um, who um, came to me with hundreds of ideas. I mean, she was just overflowing with stuff. We talked about so many interesting things um, and it was great, but it was really frustrating actually because we met probably three or four times and actually nothing was done. No sketchbook was started. Nothing was done because she actually couldn't get started. She was afraid to start in a sketchbook because she was afraid to do something rubbish um, and she was afraid to start because she just had too many ideas. Um, so we worked really hard with saying what well, I was sort of saying, you know, we have to choose one. We have to choose one idea, a very small, well, not necessarily a small idea, but just one thing that we can explore in depth rather than just kind of scattering our attention across lots of different ideas and never really exploring any of them in the depth that's required. So we worked with, um, she had an idea about, she was having lots of dental work done and braces and extraction, Ooh, lots of horrible stuff. <laughs> she wanted to do some work on that. She kind of had OCD issues with it all as well. And it was something really personal to her, really honest, and she was happy to explore it in her work and talk about it, and that was all okay. So so we, we first started actually just playing about with tooth, drawing with toothpaste in her sketchbook, you know, the red, white, and blue stripy one. Um, and we just started messing about on some paper, having a bit of fun with some toothpaste. Um, and I tell you, she came back the next week with nearly a full sketchbook. And it was amazing. It really was. So that's just a quick, um, yeah, a quick story about a student that we had last year, which was an absolute joy, really, to work with. Um, OK, so you start too late. Some digital portfolios are required by mid-January. Um, we've had students come to us in the Christmas holidays saying they're thinking of starting a portfolio for our college. Ah! <laughs> Not now! <laughs> maybe next year uh, yeah that's a bit late you really need to be starting well before January so get organized you don't get your digital portfolio showing your work at its best not all colleges have digital portfolio submissions I'll say that to begin with um, Edinburgh and Glasgow do ones in London do um, yeah I can't go through them all but some colleges have digital portfolios have, as a first selection um, and some colleges only look at digital portfolios. They never actually meet you and they never actually look at your physical portfolio. So if you don't get your digital portfolio looking really good, you either, well, you've blown it, to be honest. You, you, <laughs> you've blown it if you're applying to Edinburgh because you'll not get a place. And if you wanted to get an interview at somewhere like Glasgow, they, they have digital portfolios and then they invite you for interview if, if you're successful through that. But you've got to get that interview. So your digital portfolio has to look really good. And if you can't get that looking its best, then, you know. And that's something that we kind of, I pride myself on doing is looking at students' portfolios and um, looking at the flow, how many projects they've got. Are we ticking all boxes for all the areas that are um, asked for? And is it a clear, succinct portfolio that shows the creative process 
And do you think that drawing is the be all and end all? Now we've heard about that with my example, but it's not a, not a passport to a place. Okay, so you've discovered what you need to do to stand out from the crowd with individual ideas and powerful sketchbooks demonstrating to the colleges that you're the best candidate for them. But my problem always was, yeah, or it is when I talk to students, sorry, they come to me, they say, I know, I mean, I've been to all the open days, I've seen these wonderful portfolios, but I don't know how to do it. You know, they don't tell me how I'm going to do it. They tell me it's got to be unique and it's got to be individual and it's got to be this and that. Um, so I'm going to just go through um, a kind of case study with a student that we worked with a couple of years ago um, and yeah we'll talk a bit more a bit later about how we, how we can do this. So this is Ellie, uh, she's a student now studying at Edinburgh College of Art in Fashion um, and she was um, so hard working she came from just a pretty standard place at school um, not necessarily the school but she wasn't she didn't seem to be excelling she was just you know an average student um, and she went on to gain five unconditional offers for fashion at some of the uh, some of the um, country's you know best fashion schools so Edinburgh Glasgow um, Oh, Leeds, oh, I've got a list in a minute, Leeds, uh, Gray's School of Art in Aberdeen and ooh, Newcastle. Okay, And she basically, she followed this criteria that I put out here, the research, the visual inquiry, you'll have seen this if you've done the challenge, development work, contextual awareness, critical judgment. And it's fine kind of going through that, but really having somebody to help bounce ideas off, um, and to help guide you through these processes. So this is her portfolio. I wanted to show you a portfolio. You often see images from portfolios from the colleges and you don't actually see the whole portfolio. You see a couple of pages from one student and a couple from another. Um, so this is her research. This is a research um, of some photos that she took when she was in China of the skyscrapers, urban China. Uh, so she was exploring with uh, some drawing to begin with, some gauze. She'd found some gauze that she was doing some printing from. So these are page sketchbook pages. Um, she was using bubble wrap. She was drawing in the squares of some graph paper and filling them in. She was basically, like that very first slide, she was playing, playing with her ideas. And she took it on a bit further. So you might say this is research, bit of development. She's developing it. She's overlaying different sizes of and grids. She's looking at how it might look on a figure. She's starting to play with the materials. You also have to remember that this student and, and most of the students in Scotland, I'm not quite sure about in England when the deadlines are for the A-levels, but that advanced higher deadline is not till June. So if you're applying for a course and you've got a deadline of January, you're only halfway through your course, you know, maybe not even halfway through your course. So the chances of you having any finished work are probably quite slim. Um, so really what we, what we presented here was, this is as finished as finished will be at this time of year. This is work in progress and this is kind of where we've got to. Um, so she was experimenting with uh, some drawings, some sketches, some um, wire um, mock-ups on models and some sort of visualizations of how these art garments could look. And she again, th these are some of the photographs that she took up here in the sketchbook. Um, she was playing with origami and folding papers and exploring the shapes and the patterns and the shadows. She's got some artists in here that she'd put in her sketchbook, designers that influenced her. Um, she started folding and putting it on the mannequin, drawing it on the figures. Um, and then actually making these paper pieces and I think these uh, models here she just cut them out of magazines and put the limbs <laughs> put the limbs in so that it looked like that these were dresses that could be worn so, so she's showing you know how she would realize these these ideas as well as she could do at that time 
and then she was looking at rural China too. She'd been out looking and photographing areas of countryside, mountains with prayer flags, and she was looking at the colours and the threads and the flags flapping in the wind and um, how she could look at starting to print using those colours. Um, so development work that goes on to these fine, and these are final pieces again, where she's just looking at how she could um, potentially realise these, these ideas that she had. So she had some life drawing, which if you're doing fashion is important to be able to draw or have an understanding of how things might hang from a figure. Um, and these are the pages from Edinburgh. Edinburgh asks for some images of context and context being in their case, they want to see what you've been inspired by. So these are the photos that she took in China. They're all her photos. They're not photos that she's taken from the internet, which is important. Um, and then designers that have influenced her, artists that have influenced her. So that's her context. So these, yeah, she went on to get five places. She was really pleased, as you can imagine. Um, she spent a long time deciding which one she was going to take. She went and visited Glasgow and Edinburgh again. It was between Glasgow and Edinburgh. She went back and visited and, oh, she was so thorough. It was incredible, really. Um, and now she's at Edinburgh. So, so one of the most important things, useful things, this is a testimonial from Ellie, that she learned was in terms of developing sketchbooks um, and really learning how to use a sketchbook. So before I said the sketchbooks are always the tricky thing. Having someone to really just talk through my ideas with because sometimes I've become confused and a bit lost on my project. Having that guidance and support from someone who knew about the process and who knew about how hard it was to get into college was key. So last year she interned for a final year student and one of the pieces that she worked on has been featured in the Graduate Fashion Week article in Vogue and this is it. So pretty amazing. She was doing the beading, there was lots of beading on this, that's what she was working on. So and she's won a scholarship recently to take part in a fully funded fashion summer school in Shanghai. So that was in the summer she was there um, just just summer just gone. So can you imagine yourself strutting the corridors of the likes of ECA, Glasgow, Central St. Martins or Falmouth? These are the kinds of places that you can imagine yourself being a part of. They're amazing places. I mean, the energy and the, the environment is fabulous. Um, this is Falmouth, this uh, Cornelia Parker, this lady here standing quite a distinctive haircut. If you don't know Cornelia, Cornelia Parker's work, please go and have a look at her. She's amazing. Um, really, really interesting thought processes and the way she thinks about her ideas. Um, so kind of coming to the end of it, it's quarter to eight. I didn't want to go on for too long. I'm not going to ramble on for the next couple of hours. Don't worry. <laughs> um, it's quarter to eight. I kind of anticipated it would be about an hour. So we're doing fine. And there's a bit of time for some questions and, and what have you at the end. But a strategy and a few things to take away was, um, you know, things that you could, well, make sure that you're doing is really your research. And I don't just mean the research of your subject in your sketchbook. What I mean is, to do your research on what each and every college that you want to apply for is looking for, for the deadlines, the portfolio guidelines and the submissions, because they're all different. Um, sadly, they've all got different deadlines, different processes, then some of them want an extra statement. Um, and if you don't get it right, then you know you risk your application not being looked at all. So planning and organizing, get yourself organized, Write stuff down, start now and get deadlines in order. Um, if you can do, try and get, you know, write this down, stick it on the wall, stick it somewhere where you can see it. Um, getting up close and personal, what makes you tick? What interests do you have? What obsessions do you have? And that's really what the creativity challenge was about, or the, in the early days of the creativity challenge, one, two, days one, two and three, was really kind of what makes you want to make art? And then the risk taking, getting out of your comfort zone. You can't just keep doing what you know works because then there'll be no variety in your portfolio and you'll be seen as somebody who likes to take the, make, you know, stay safe um, and not take any risks. And therefore, if you don't take risks, 
often you don't get to that really kind of exciting, innovative place that you want, really want to be. Um, reflecting and making reasons, decisions is really essential. And that's the annotation and that's the bonus day that we did was really trying to every now and again, just stop where you are and look back at what you've been doing. You've maybe been working quite um, experimentally and, you know, throwing things in the air and, you know, doing whatever you want to do for weeks on end and you've got a stack of stuff. Every now and again, you actually need to stop and say, right, I need to look at this, take stock of what I've done, what's working, what's not, and being able to make decisions about what to go forwards with. Um, there's, a, there's a say, a quote from E.L. Doctorow that I really like, and it kind of touches upon this, and I'll, I'll explain it a bit more. But that thing about trying to think about what your final piece is, we all like to know what the final piece is. But this E.L. Doctorow, she's a writer, I think, um, she says, if you're traveling to London by car at night, you don't need to be able to see London to get there safely. You need to see the next 100 meters. You need to see the next 100 meters. You need to see the next 100 meters. And you can make your way like that. You don't have to see your destination before you get started. And my sort of interpretation of that as well is that you will get to junctions um, and you have to make decisions. And this is where the reflecting is. You'll get to a junction and you'll have to make a decision about whether to go left or to go right. But going left might take you somewhere so much more exciting than London. <laughs> um, that's my kind of uh, little thing that I like to think, well, yeah, we, we kind of know we want to go to London, but actually, would it not be much more exciting to go to Florence or somewhere? <laughs> so stick, try and keep that um, with you when you're playing it safe and trying to think about what the final piece is going to be. <laughs> So how to apply this to your situation? How are you going to apply all this? What we'd like to do is introduce you to a Folio Foundations course that um, I've written. And it's based upon building this creativity challenge. Um, it's seven modules that expand your knowledge and change your perceptions about what your creative portfolio can be. Um, it starts on January the 15th. So after the new year, when we've all had a chance to thaw out and get over the um festive season and it's 100 percent online where you can study anywhere in the world at a time a place a place uh, a pace and a place for your own convenience and flexibility and inside the portfolio foundations we'll bring new perspectives on your ideas and my personal tuition to realize these so i sometimes think you know it's having somebody to bounce your ideas off somebody to talk to about your ideas even just talking to somebody about it, not necessarily, I don't necessarily give all my students the answers. I don't necessarily tell them what to do. But just by having that conversation and dialogue about, you know, me asking, well, what were you trying to do here? And um, why, why, did you do, why did you do that? Did you enjoy it? You know, me questioning um, often brings out an awful lot in students. And we'll build upon exploration of the creativity challenge and depending on your area of interest, we'll progress onto many different materials and techniques that will translate your ideas further. You'll learn how to further reflect on the work at key stages. And this is a bit, little bit about what I was just saying there about um, when you get to a junction, you've got to stop and decide which way to go. Getting to key stages with your research and your development and, and reflecting and thinking, OK, this is a point where I need to decide, how am I going to use that? How am I going to use this? And this is how um, the colleges assess your critical reflection, how good, what the good choices are that you're making in the creative process. Have you gone on to choose an idea and use materials that were just so inappropriate for the subject? You know, they'd be questioning your um, your reflection, but be questioning your judgment, your critical judgment. Okay. Your work will develop in relation to other artists and designers, and the colleges assess your portfolio on context, and you'll need to demonstrate that you're aware of other relevant contemporary artists and designers. So we're not talking about uh, old masters, Picasso, um, Monet, all the kind of big names. We're talking about people who are alive today 
working in contemporary art and design. That's really important for art college. So how much does the course cost? It's £67 if you're joining before 12 noon on the 19th of December. Okay, so we'll, we'll do an offer for you, um, and t but after that it's going to go up to 97 and that's, that's the price it will remain on the website. Um, so join before the 19th of December if you want to get that £30 discount. But we've also got a couple of bonuses as well. Um, and if you've worked in this Facebook support group, um, I know some of you have, some of you haven't. Um, but for me, when I've done these kinds of challenges and these kinds of courses, the Facebook support group is the most incredible thing because basically whoever's running the group or the course is pretty much there. I mean, I'm not going to be, I, I don't sit on the computer all day, every day, but I, I'm in and out, you know, regularly. Um, so my valuable and time is equivalent probably to at least two hours of one-to-one -one mentoring, which I charge £80. But the, the, the value of the support group um, is immense in these kinds of situations. And also exclusive access to a video presentation, Drawing, Keeping It Current. It was commissioned for the Art of Education conference in America last year, and it will challenge your views on drawing and how you can embed it into your creative practice to produce that knockout portfolio. And that we've kind of valued at £400, which is what it cost to go to the conference last year. So we'll just go over it. seven modules that expand your knowledge. It starts on the 15th of January, 100% online, so you can study anywhere in the world. Um, we'll bring new perspectives on your ideas and my personal tuition to realise these. And we'll build upon the exploration that we started in the Creativity Challenge. And depending on your ideas and your interests, ideas can often kind of dictate what materials and techniques you'll use. So we'll, we'll help you with that. And you'll learn how to re further reflect on the work at key stages to guide your creative journey to successful outcomes. Your work will develop in relation to other artists and designers, contemporary, and the bonuses, the Facebook support group and the um, drawing, keeping it current conference video. Okay, so the price at £67 before the 19th of December, going up to 97 after that date. So if you do want to enrol, you've got a bit of time to have a think about it, I'm not pushing anybody to, to, to sign up today. <laughs> the the, the um, address to go to is here on the screen, um, www.portfolio.com slash go slash folio foundations. You don't need that slash at the end, I forgot to take that off. Um, if you want to go there and just have a look, there's much more of a breakdown of what we do on the course. If you want to just go and have a look and um, you know have a think about your decision. I just wanted to show a few testimonials for you, um, students that we've worked with who have been an absolute joy. Um, Aru Ramasetti is not the student, she's the parent. They came all the way from India um, and sought me out online and turned up at my door one day asking if they could enroll on my course. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know, I, I work from home in my office here. My students come to the office here, they, they come to the studio, um, but they don't normally turn up unannounced. <laughs> so anyway, they found me by accident. My heartfelt gratitude and big thanks to Julie Reed of Portfolio. Her careful nurturing, great guidance and mentoring helped my daughter to realise her dream of studying art at Edinburgh University. Portfolio delivers all that it promises. And this is Yashi, this is the daughter, this is the girl I worked with. Thanks to Portfolio, I got admission to ECA. A year back, I wouldn't have known how to create a portfolio and what universities look for in a promising student. With Julie's guidance and teaching, I began to realise the process and she helped me right down to the minute details. Thanks, Julie, you really helped me. So that was a joy. Um, I don't think many Indian students get into Edinburgh just because the differences in the curriculum and the education are quite um, outstanding, I think. Julie's an expert portfolio judge with a wide and comprehensive understanding of our college entrance requirements. And with this, there's an understanding of curriculum requirements in higher education. She combines her academic expertise with the talent and deep knowledge of a successful practicing professional fine artist across the full spectrum of fine arts, traditional and contemporary media and techniques. 
that's a colleague, um, Ian Trevor Martin, who's an art educator and consultant advocate for creative arts. So as a student from last year, photography student, both Alex and I view portfolio as excellent value for money. You gave Alex the best chance he could possibly have had when applying to ECA. You provided knowledge and insight and were able to direct Alex in a way that showcased his strengths in his work and this was invaluable. I would recommend Portfolio Oomph absolutely. Alex enjoyed his time with you discussing his work and you gave him the belief in himself that applying for art college was really possible. Alex is starting college this week and his work, in his words, he's super excited. That was, a, that was fab. I mean, he's already started. This was, this was August. Uh, he was starting in August. So he's, he's um, in second year photography, direct entry into second year. Um, Kathleen Bolt is another parent. When we discovered Portfolio Oomph by chance, it was just what we needed, access to advice from somebody independent in the art world. It was also a flexible service, which I think was a great strength. Many thanks for supporting Lachlan in developing his ideas, skills and abilities and for going the extra mile at each point um, when it was needed and giving him the confidence to believe in what he wanted to achieve. I'm absolutely delighted and excited for him getting into GSA and the particular course that he so wanted to get on, sculpture and environmental art. If we'd not discovered Portfolio Oomph, I think it would have taken Lachlan at least another year to get to the point where he's at now. And Lachlan graduated last year, um, so he's he's away um, being a uh, an artist. <laughs> yeah. So a recap very quickly. The address is at the bottom if you want to go and have a wee look. Seven modules expand your knowledge and ch change your perceptions. We start on the fifteenth of January. A hundred percent online, so you can study anywhere in the world at a time, pace, and place for your own convenience. We will bring new perspectives on your ideas and my personal tuition to realise these. We'll build on the exploration in the creativity challenge and depending on your area of interest, progress onto many materials and techniques that will translate your ideas further. And you'll learn how to reflect on your work at key stages to guide your creative journey to successful outcomes. Your work will develop in relation to other artists and designers. The colleges assess the portfolio on context and you'll need to demonstrate that you're aware of other relevant contemporary artists and designers. And the bonuses, the Facebook support group and the drawing keeping it current. Okay, so that's where I'll leave it just now. Um, and I'll just check where we're at with the slides. Um, so, well, I'm, I'm guessing actually that I'll just recap where you may find, may feel you're at. You may be still afraid that your portfolio won't cut it and that you'll lose out on that place that you so want. And that's where I was when I was applying. Um, are you concerned that you're wasting time because you're just not sure what the individual portfolio means and how you can achieve it? And maybe you're stressing that if you don't get into your first choice college, that you'll have to settle for second best and give up on your dream. I mean settling for second best maybe isn't awful um, as in second best college but having to totally give up on pursuing a creative career particularly if you're a school leaver and that's really your dream at the moment then there's a long way ahead of you to be happy settling for second best I'm working with a student at the moment who always felt that she'd not really been encouraged to um, explore her creativity and she ended up going down a science route um, and she's worked for probably I don't know how old she is she's probably worked for 10 12 years in sciences and now is applying to Glasgow School of Art um, and yeah she's really enjoying what we're doing and yeah following that dream now she's a wee bit older so you may be finding difficulty in finding inspiration that's personal to you when you're used to teachers setting a project or brief and feeling lost with how to come up with original ideas. So that hopefully these are the reasons why you join the Creativity Challenge um, and doing the kinds of things that we're proposing on the Folio Foundation course is really what we did with all our students, Ellie and um, all the students we had in the testimonials. That, that's the route that they've all gone down. Um, I say I, I've not done anything different with any of them. 
It's just how they've responded to what we've talked about. It's their individuality that's kind of directed um, what we do. Okay. So I just wanted to finish up there. It's oh, it's eight o'clock. That's good timing. Um, we started a wee bit after eight, uh, seven. That's fine. If you've got any questions, if you want to give us, you know, just type them into the box. If you've got anything that you want to ask, um, if you if you don't, then no worries, that's fine. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've got a few things that I could. I wrote a few kind of comments myself about things that people might want to ask, but I'll just leave it a second and see if anything pops up in my box. Okay, so things that I thought might be asked um, that I, yeah, I thought that there may be questions from people who might say that I'm not really sure what I want to study. Um, is the course for suitable for me if I don't really know what I want to go on to study at art college? And I would say yes. What I do um, with all students is based on what we do here in the Folio Foundations, possibly with an exception to students who are doing photography or film and video. Um, but just purely because these are lens-based media and I wouldn't be encouraging you to be doing drawing and experimenting with charcoal and mixed media and all these kind of things. But for any other um, subject, textiles, jewellery, um, a basic start to a portfolio would always start with, you know, the exploration, the drawing, the experimenting. And then they would eventually, at these junctions, be choosing materials and techniques that are appropriate to the subject that they want to apply for. Um, I wondered whether people might ask if I don't have that much money to buy materials, does this matter? Um, I would say there's no um, necessity to buy lots of different materials. You can feel like there is um, when you look at some courses and um, some YouTube videos, there's all kinds of things that you can use and get embroiled in all kinds of materials. But um, to have a really sort of basic um, set of good drawing materials, inks, um, and just to kind of buy things as and when you need them, using found things. Um, there's all kinds of ways that you can develop your work without having to go to huge expenses. So as long as you've got materials to buy two or three sketchbooks, um, sorry, money to buy two or three sketchbooks, um, some basic drawing materials, and to be able to spend a bit of money here and there along the way um, is really all that's required. Um, Another question, I thought, I'm a mature student. Do many go to art college? Um, not huge numbers, I wouldn't say, but I do think it's a really, really valued contribution to art college. Um, it's a valuable experience for you, obviously, um, but having mature students on your course or in your class is wonderful because they've just got a different view on the world. They've got life experience. They see things differently and there are challenges with that as well. Um, but yeah, go for it. If you're a mature student wanting to change career or if you want to, you know, do something having retired and, you know, this is your dream, what you've always wanted to do. I've worked with two or three um, women you generally a couple of men actually but uh, people who have retired and thought you know actually this is my time this is the time i'm going to go to art college and it's great it's amazing um another question i thought i don't live near any galleries can i still do this course there's no um requirement to visit galleries although it's a nice um you know it, it's a it's a, not a need but it's a good thing to be able to do if you can do the world's opened up, obviously, with the internet and all that kind of thing. But I have I do have to say, seeing stuff online as opposed to seeing stuff seeing stuff in galleries, there's no comparison, to be honest. Um, but you don't have to be living near galleries to be able to do this kind of course. We've, excuse me, we've covered the one about photography. Um, maybe you don't feel that you're really ready to apply this year. 
And if you're applying this year and thinking of a January deadline, then I would perhaps hang fire for now. In all honesty, there's no way that you can start a portfolio, even if you started now. Um, and aiming for a January deadline, I'll be honest with you, it, it's not a good idea. Um, by all means, try it if you want to and get and learn from the experience. But um, it's I wouldn't put that pressure on yourself, to be honest. So if we're starting on the 15th of January, then I wouldn't, you know, I don't think it's perhaps the time to do it unless you want to sort of defer it and, and, and apply for next year instead. Um, and I think that was probably, that's probably all I could think of that may be asked. But if you've got anything you want to ask um, just in the last couple of minutes here, then, then just type it into the box. Otherwise, we'll finish up. And what I've done, I've recorded this uh, webinar. So if you wanted to go back and watch it again, you can do. Um, and I will email you the link as soon as it's available. Um, and yeah, I, I hope some of you will be enrolling because I say I absolutely love to work with new people, with new ideas, um, and get a new. Um, perspective on yeah just how people create what people are thinking okay i'm going to leave you with this last one i did notice something came up hang on just a second um great thanks uh Jeannie. that's wonderful um i'm just going to leave you with this one here just before you log out have a quick read if you feel safe in the area that you're working you're not working in the right area Always go a little further into the water than you feel you're capable of being in. Go a little bit out of your depth. And when you don't feel that your feet are quite touching the bottom, you're just about in the right place to do something exciting. And that actually makes me really tingle and makes me, it makes me feel quite emotional because it is. It's about that kind of getting out of your comfort zone. And that's from David Bowie. And we all have to listen to David Bowie because he really was amazing. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your time. That's an hour of your time. Um, have a nice evening. Have a good Christmas if I uh, don't get to speak to you or, or interact with you somewhere along the way. <laughs> um, and yeah, thanks very much. Bye bye.